Hi, uh, my name is Pranay Kumar and I work with a firm called Advanced Innovation Group. Through this video, I will give you a perspective of uh, one of the very important process capability measures of CPCPK. Uh, I hope you understand that uh, CP essentially is a measure of the process potential index, also referred to as the inherent process capability or, or what is referred to by certain scholars as the capability of your process by design. CP essentially is a ratio of customer tolerance and normal distribution. Should I have a normal distribution curve with a known mean and known lower specification and upper specification limit? CP essentially is a ratio of the customer specification that is the USL minus the LSL divided by six times the standard deviation. So while you're looking at calculating CP, you must have information on your upper specification limit and your lower specification limit and your standard deviation. There are three typical situations. CP could be equal to one. If you're looking at a business process where CP is equal to one, you are essentially looking at the USL and LSL exactly at the normal distribution. When normal distribution curve and the USL minus LSL are exactly the same. For CP equal to one, customer spec and normal distribution will have to be exactly the same. From this, if I, if I were to know that a, a, a business process is currently working at a CP is equal to one, I would infer that under normal conditions, normal process is capable of creating products that meet customer specification. However, if any special cause variation happens, we are almost sure to make defects. Next situation is when CP is less than one. I've, I've marked it as uh, marked it in red. Again, the same story. If I have a normal distribution curve and my CP is less than one, it would typically mean that the USL and the LSL are inside of the normal distribution. That some parts, if you see here, some parts here and some parts here are already outside the specification. For CP equal to one, customer spec is smaller than the normal distribution curve. From that I would infer that even the normal process is incapable of creating products that meet customer requirement. A, a little part or, or maybe more is already outside the acceptable area. Best condition CP greater than 1. I have a normal distribution curve. If my CP were to be greater than 1, my specification limits will be outside the normal distribution. For CP greater than 1, customer spec shall always be greater than the normal distribution curve. Inference, normal process is capable. Our normal process is well within the specification limit. However, even for some special cause variation, there is little cushion. I have some cushion here available. I have some cushion here available. So CP greater than one is the best possible option for your service design. While CP is your inherent process capability, your performance measurement is your CPK. If I have a normal distribution pro uh, normally distributed process with a known mean and known specification limit, you would always want that your process center would be exactly at the center of the specification. Let's say I have a specification given to me by the customer of not exceeding 100 and not going below 40. I would want my center of the process to be exactly at 100 minus 40 by 2, which is 70. However, in reality, your process is bound to shift. While you wanted your process mean to be here, where I've marked it as in black, your process mean would have shifted. C 
CPK essentially is a measure of your process performance index. We must measure the designed capability, which is the CP, against what we have actually performed, which is my CPK. So CP is my potential index, what I'm capable of doing. And CPK is my performance index, what I actually did. CPK mathematically uses two formulas, either uses a formula of CPK is equal to minimum of CP on my upper side and CP on my lower side where CP on my upper side is USL minus my mean upon three times standard deviation and CP on my lower side is mean minus the LSL upon three times standard deviation. You draw both these values, whichever is smaller becomes your CPK. And you must understand, while you wanted your mean at the specification center, exactly between the specifications, the actual mean may shift either side from the specification center. It could move towards your USL or towards your LSL. Whichever side the mean would have moved, you are more likely on that side to cross the customer specification. You must understand CPK is a measure of the same effect of the shift of your process from your desired mean. Let's use some numbers now. If you see this example first, this is where the dotted uh, line of uh, in black that we've drawn, this is where you wanted your mean to be. But it has moved to, to, to its right. You are more likely to cross your USL than you are to your LSL. You've grown, uh, you've gone, gone farther from your LSL. So the likely CPK value will be your CP USL value. Let's, let's look at a, a calculation. So in this case, I've used an example where the uh, lower specification limit as given to me by my customer is 20 with a upper specification limit of 100. Obviously, my intended mean is at 60. While my actual mean is at 80. So my process CP is USL minus LSL, upper specification 100, minus lower specification which is 20 divided by 6 times the standard deviation so 100 by 20 divided by 6 times the 10 10 is what I assumed as my standard deviation so 80 by 60 my CP value is 1.33 remember CP here in this case is greater than 1 which is brilliant if I were to calculate my CPK remember the formula CPK is a minimum of CPU and CPL CPU in this case is USL minus the mean upon three standard deviation, so which is 100 minus the actual mean which is 80 divided by 3 times 10, 20 upon 30 which is 0.66, less than 1 if you see here. While my CPL will be mean 80 minus the lower specification limit which is 20 divided by 3 into 10 which is 30, so 60 by 30 which is 2. Obviously this is this is way higher than 0.66 which would mean that CPK will assume this smaller value which is 0.66 so in this business process I see that my CP is 1.33 while my CPK has gone down to 0.66 if you work at drawing inference from the above CP greater than 1 which means that by design the process is capable while CPK we are doing way less than what we are capable of we are capable of doing 1.33 while we are doing less than 1 which is very very bad for business a few takeaways CPK is your capability by design while CPK apologies if I if I CP is capability by design while CPK is your performance index. So CP is your capability, CPK is your performance. Organizations shall have to make arrangements that CPK is equal to CP. CP, CPK, CPU, CPL shall all be equal 
if the desired mean and the actual mean CP, CPK, CPU and CPL shall be equal when the desired mean of the process and the actual mean of the process are the same. CPK will be less than 1 which would mean that the process is not performing as per the customer specification. CPK can take negative values when mean exceeds my USL or my process mean goes beyond my lower specification limit. In two cases, my CPK can take on negative values. If mean exceeds this specification, CPK shall become negative. I hope this simple video helps you understand uh, CP, CPK uh, with, with uh, greater clarity.